allies once again. Yeah, not everyone was impressed by that, though. Here's former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo this weekend. When I hear the administration talk about taking America back, they're talking about back to what President Obama did for eight years, where America was weak. We, we might have been liked. I've seen a lot of people talk about how they're having this really fun time over at the G7. and Everybody likes President Biden. What's important is not that they like America, but that they respect us. Welcome in the panelists for that. Right now we have Hal Lambert joining us, former Ted Cruz National Finance Chair. We also have Rick Green, founder of PatriotAcademy.com. And Jen Kearns, host of All American Radio and publisher of AllAmericanNews.com and contributor at Newsmax.com. Good to see everyone here. Jen, I'll start with you. Is Pompeo correct on that? Is America liked but not respected? I'm afraid so, Sean, and that is one of the things that Ronald Reagan taught us so well, is that it's more important to be respected than it is to be liked, uh, not to mention the various gaffes that happened during the G7 so far uh, with uh, President Biden actually using the, the country named Libya instead of Syria at least three times when he was referring to that. Uh, this looks like a, a man who is not ready for prime time, not ready for the stage overseas. And, and Boris uh, himself had to, Boris Johnson had to actually intervene and sort of protect Biden from his own self uh, when speaking at the roundtable there. Th this is unfortunate. And, and unfortunately, our allies and more importantly, our enemies are probably laughing at us be behind our backs there at the G7. You know, you mentioned uh, that one gaffe, Libya, Syria, comparison and confusion there. Uh, there's another soundbite, as you say, uh, with Boris Johnson, a leader uh, of South Africa as well. We'll play that in a moment if we've got time. But Hal, I just want to ask you again, you know, these might be closed door meetings, but you do have camera access. There's a pool camera in there. So the video is captured. It's shared online. How are people viewing President Biden, his leadership over America and where America really stands on the international? stage? Well, I think they're viewing it in different ways. I mean, if you look at conservative uh, social media, uh, you know, it's it's pretty much critical of, of the way he presented himself in the, in the country of the United States overseas. Uh, if you look at the rest of the mainstream media, uh, they've pretty much ignored it and, and tried to play it off as, as he had a, a great uh, a great trip. I, I think that, you know, when you look at it by any, any stretch, um, He's not uh, representing the United States, in my opinion, uh, as the, the global world leader. Uh, we, we, in every instance, it seems that we just kind of come across as one of the other countries sitting at the table, uh, one of the other countries involved, and it's simply not the case. Um, we have to be viewed as the leader. We are the largest economy in the world. We do protect Europe militarily. We do protect much of the world militarily. And they have to have confidence in us that we can handle the Putins of the world, that we can handle the Chinese uh, President Xi, that we can handle Iran, that we can handle North Korea. And, and that has to be presented in a way that uh, people have confidence and, and they understand that, hey, uh, Biden's on top of this and we feel comfortable. And I don't think that's going to be the case after this uh, trip. Rick Green, I'll close with you on this. Um, diplomacy can be argued is built on relationships. So we understand that we've got to make this appearance um, and, and, and be chummy if you will, in terms of what you've seen, heard from State uh, Secretary of State or uh, former uh, Mike Pompeo. But in the terms of what is getting done with the NATO summit, with G7, aside from the corporate tax hike to 15 percent, what is actually accomplished? Well, that's the whole problem with just being one of the other countries. Hal's exactly right. But this is the leftist dream that America would just be one of the other countries rather than be the leader that drives the very policies that you're talking about. I mean, this is a failure of a president to do exactly what the Constitution requires of them. In fact, the 25th Amendment is designed to say when they can no longer fulfill the powers and the duties of the office. This is a powerful office, and this president is projecting anything but power. The, the media, when they say that uh, they like us now, that these other countries like us now, they like us in the way that, that, that you like an old uncle that shows up, that, that, that sits over and can't even really talk to the rest of the family, but he's sweet. Uh, unfortunately, some of these countries like this guy because they see someone they can take advantage of. They see someone that they can run circles around. This is bad for America. It is bad for the world because when America's weak, 
then it's bad for the rest of the world. So, you know, I, I, I don't want a President Harris, but look, this is what the 25th Amendment was designed for. We've never had to do it in this particular case because you would think that a family would step up and say, look, he's not capable of doing the job anymore. It's an embarrassment to the country and to the family. That The Biden family is not going to do that. So at some point, 25th Amendment is going to have to be invoked. Mm, okay. Uh, Joe Biden, obviously, is still president uh, today as he continues out with his duties there. Uh, but our panelists, if you don't mind sticking around, Hal Lambert, Rick Green, Jennifer Kearns, we've got another topic to get to. Yeah, coming up, Pelosi and